So this video is kind of uh, going to be the state of 4K or uh, state of high resolution gaming, uh, kind of early 2016. I'm going to take you through the different kind of pros and cons of both 21 by 9, 4K, 1440p, and 1080p, including 1080p surround uh, and even 1440p surround. So that is something to bear in mind as you uh, travel with me into the yonders of exploration. Check out techteamgb.co.uk for more awesome news, reviews and other stuff, including more information on this product and many more. Stick around for this awesome video. So obviously there are a couple of different uh, setups here, and while these ones ne aren't necessarily what you would call high res, I'm going to start out with these just for the people who can't necessarily afford uh, the super high res options that we're going to be taking a look at in just a second. So first of all, in terms of 1080p, one of the best gaming monitors right now, at least in terms of uh, you know 144Hz uh, and even and some of the more gaming features like FreeSync and G-Sync is the AOC G2460. The PF version has FreeSync and costs pretty much the same, if not possibly less depending on where you are, than the non-FreeSync version. And the G-Sync one is a little bit more depending again on where you are. In terms of more high resolution setups, you could pick up three of these and put them in a NVIDIA Surround or AMD, AMD Affinity setup, and that would probably be high resolution, uh, at least a, a decent amount. Although do bear in mind that if you are running Affinity or NVIDIA Surround, there is a little bit of trickery that goes on in that the displays on the left and the right of the center, the image on them often gets stretched so that the GPU you need to power them isn't as kind of uh, you know beefy as you might think. So if, uh, for a 1080p surround setup, something like a GTX 970 would be perfect, uh, and you'd be uh, playing games just fine on you know 60 to possibly even more uh, you know uh, FPS um, on higher even ultra settings. So that is pretty awesome. In terms of single monitor, but a slightly more high res, 1440p is a really nice shout. Personally, I think it's one of the best setups right now as it's the kind of best cost to kind of screen real estate and resolution that you can get as there are a lot of great options. You still have 144 hertz as an option uh, as well as things like G-Sync and FreeSync which are available. Uh, and while they are a little bit more expensive, you can get some relatively decent value ones uh, for not too much more than a standard or even a gaming 1080p monitor. So that's pretty cool. So in terms of ultra wides, obviously I've got one of the best ones to sort of show off to you here, uh, this being the Acer XR341CK, but um, basically ultra wides are a very compelling uh, kind of buy at the moment, especially if you're looking for racing or possibly even FPS gaming. This uh, kind of does have the advantage of being, as I said, one of the best with things like MD's FreeSync and also the fact that it's 3840 by 1440, so it's the more higher end version. You can also get 2560 by 1080, which is effectively uh, two 1080p screens together as opposed to this one, which is two 1440p screens together. And the lower end sort of 1080 model uh, will be easier to run, so you, if you have a, a lower end graphics card, uh, when I say lower end, I don't mean low end, I mean lower than a 980 Ti. Um, something like a 970 could very capably handle um, the uh, 2560 by 1080 ultra wide. Um, whereas you will be looking for a 980 or a 980 Ti to run something like this uh, sort of smoothly on high settings. Um, I was expect I, I basically with the 980 Ti got between 70 and 80 FPS in most games on ultra settings. So that's the sort of performance with that graphics card that you can kind of expect. Um, and it's a very compelling experience. Obviously this one is curved, so it's very immersive, uh, very awesome. It obviously doesn't have the problem of you know having big bezels in between. Um, and obviously you can still run this in a surround configuration if you were mad enough to try. Uh, but at the same time, uh, this specific one and often a lot of other ultrawides do come at a pretty high cost in comparison to effectively 1080p or 1440p or even some 4K counterparts. So that is something to be aware of. It's a very nice experience and possibly the most immersive and enjoyable experience, but it often does come at a cost and can be a little bit difficult to run uh, as well. So do bear that in mind. While 21 by 9 monitors do give you the competitive advantage, you're seeing just that little bit more than you would normally see. So for things like uh, FPS and racing games, it gives you a really nice competitive advantage and is a very awesome experience. 4K monitors give you a very detailed, crisp image that is quite enjoyable and just very sort of visually pleasing to look at. Now, at the time of filming, 4K is almost prohibitively uh, annoying uh, <laughs> for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's quite expensive. Even uh, you know the relatively cheap ones that you can pick up on eBay or Amazon, uh, they aren't necessarily going to be gaming grade, for example, with features like G-Sync and FreeSync. Um, 
that's going to be something that you'll have to shell out a bit more for and if you're looking for a branded 4k monitor you look to be paying through the nose for that too also you will need a relatively uh, both powerful and therefore expensive graphics card if you want to play on high settings uh, something like a 90 ti or fury x is almost minimum if you want to play on high settings so do bear that in mind as well i know you can play on lower settings but if you're going for 4k you may want to look at getting a decent graphics card too Something else to, also to mention is that 4K is limited to 60Hz at this point in time. Understand that the few, uh, next generation of both AMD and possibly Nvidia graphics cards will feature DisplayPort 1.3 which should be able to run 4K 144Hz or possibly even 8K. Um, it is something to bear in mind that uh, at this point in time, at time of filming, uh, it is not possible and therefore if you're looking for a very smooth, uh, very enjoyable kind of high resolution and high refresh rate, uh, then something like a 21 by 9, 3840 by 4, uh, 1440 monitor may be the best place to go for that as uh, you know, 4K isn't quite there yet. So there you go, that's kind of the, the roundup of the different kind of monitors that you will both uh, want and kind of what GPUs you will need to power them. Obviously the main pros and cons for me are uh, both that in terms of the higher resolution you get, the more GPU horsepower you need and therefore overall the more expensive it gets, but at the same time the, the best experience that I've had is the Acer XR31 at uh, 341. Um, which was just such an amazing experience. Obviously having it curved around you um, is really nice. The resolution was fantastic, so it was a very crisp image. Uh, and it was just generally very nice. And obviously the 980 Ti that I have there, uh, or the uh, Fury um, can very easily power this, uh, or I wanna say very easily. It can power it pretty well with, you know, kind of the 70 to 80 FPS range on most games on higher ultra settings. So for me, that's the sweet spot in terms of just general gaming, especially if you're looking for a competitive advantage. If you can't spend as much as something like the uh, rather ridiculously expensive XR341 or the uh, X34 Predator, uh, then you will be looking at 1440p in which there are a few more uh, kind of more reasonable options, including things like FreeSync and G-Sync and 144Hz support. Um, so if you're looking for a kind of sweet spot and you have a decent amount of money to, money to spend, that's definitely where you're going to go for high resolution gaming. If you want just a little bit less, so 1080p, then I definitely, definitely recommend an AOC G2460, whether that's the FreeSync, G-Sync, or just non-adaptive uh, uh, refresh rate technology version. Um, either way, that right now is probably my best uh, recommendation in terms of, sort of gaming uh, 1080p monitors. Other than that, I guess that's kind of it. If you have any questions or anything to add to the video, feel free to leave that in the comments down below. I generally reply to most people, so um, if you fancy having a chat, feel free to leave a question or anything else in the comments down below. Um, but other than that, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'm gonna leave Amazon links to the different monitors and possibly graphics cards in the links in the sort of description down below. So if you wanna pick any of those up or really anything else, it doesn't have to be tech related, it'd be really awesome if you use my Amazon affiliate links as it, 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 it's genuinely helping me keep the lights and the roof over my head uh, available so yeah I guess that's kind of it don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter uh, stick around for some more videos including subscribing uh, and yeah we'll see you on the next video